Hi, this is episode 6 of our Home Gardening Hacks during Corona Lockdown. And the previous uh, 5 episodes have been runaway hits and hundreds of you have sent me such beautiful videos and pics of all the success that you've had growing these wonderful, nutritious, absolutely fresh um, greens and other things uh, during the lockdown uh, using Jugaad technology. And uh, I think the chickpea was a runaway hit because I've got most of you having brilliant success with that. And uh, I have started to receive uh, sprouting onions from episode one from uh, some of you. So I think it's all been good. And I was wondering what should episode six be about? And uh, I thought, let me make this about one of the biggest and the most frustrating aspects of amateur home gardening that is dealing with pests. And pests come in many forms, the most common, the most difficult to get rid of, mealybugs, spider mites, aphids, slugs and snails, and of course, uh, things like mildew, uh, fungal mildew and things like that. So I said, how great it would be if for all of these that I've listed, mealybugs, aphids, spider mites, white flies, snails and slugs, and powdery mildew. If I could give one hack that would take care of all this, and this hack would not come from a pesticide shop, but from something that you can make from the ingredients that are in your own kitchen during this lockdown. So I think we are going to have a very exciting episode, which will be so handy for amateur gardeners and especially beginners who get so frustrated and demotivated when they get hit by these very, very common pests. Now, before we rush off to make pesticides and try to kill everything that there is on our plants, my advice to you is become, become like a farmer for a day with immense patience. Whether you panic or whether you have the patience to observe nature, it's your call. Because if you patiently observe nature, you might just find the whole scenario so different from your expectation and what you think was imperative for you to rush to the pesticide uh, shop or make the Jugaad pest repellent right away. Normally, if an amateur gardener sees a site such as this, the entire undersurface of the leaf completely infested with uh, aphids, he would panic and straight run to a pesticide shop, uh, probably buy a very toxic chemical like Avid and spray like there is no tomorrow. But is there just another way of looking at this? I mean, do you see just more than aphids on that leaf? Look closely. Those brown egg-like structures are aphid mummies which contain the eggs of a parasitic wasp. Now, look at this cluster of yellow eggs. These are actually the eggs of the ladybug beetle. Both the parasitic wasp and the ladybug beetle are predators of aphids. To me, that indicates that nature has already taken care. And instead of running to the pesticide shop, I look at the entire plant. What do I see? I see the fresh leaves are not infected. That means nature has already used natural predators to control the aphids. No panic pesticide buying, just patiently harvest the crop. Most of you know about how voraciously ladybugs devour uh, mealybugs, uh, aphids and mites. They are voracious eaters. But to me, there is another insect that is even more effective. It is this parasitic wasp. Just look at the size compared to a ladybug, how small it is, but it is lethal because what this wasp does is it goes and stings the mealybugs or the mites or the uh, aphids and then lays its egg inside them. You watch, watch how it is stinging. I'll play that in slow motion. Now you watch that proboscis coming. Yes, yes, it extends and now you can see it sting that mealybug and lay its eggs. This is what it does. I will show you another uh, occurrence of this behavior. You can see this one on the top. 
uh, its sting is there and it's coming and now it's puncturing the mealybug. These eggs hatch inside the mealybug creating these aphid mummies and thereby completely disseminating the aphids, the mealybugs, the white flies, the spider mites without any need of pesticides. Many a time you will see that wherever there are mealybugs, mites or aphids, there will be ants and understanding the role of these ants is very important because the ants and the mealybugs share a very special relationship. If you take the ants out of the equation, you can take the mealybugs out of the equation. These ants drive away the predators like the parasitic wasp that you can see. It's going to fly away because the ant is threatening. It's there. It's flown away. These ants will even threaten pollinating uh, bees. The bees fly away. And the ladybugs really don't stand a chance in front of these ants because uh, watch the ant that is aggressively going to attack this uh, ladybug. Uh, it's, the ladybug has flown away from there and it's landed on another leaf. But there is another ant there. And you can see how uh, rigorously uh, it is attacking the lady, uh, ladybug. And the ladybug has actually now decided to fly away. The ants and these mealybugs and aphids and uh, the mites, they share a wonderful relationship. Did you see that ant eating those beautiful drops of sugary syrup that's being given by the aphids? That's how the reward system works. Ants protect these pests and these pests reward it uh, with these sugar syrup so that predators such as the parasitic wasp or the ladybug don't dare come to these colonies of aphids or mealybugs or mites. This is a beautiful relationship where the ant actually becomes the protector of these colonies and the colonies reward it with food. What is very evident here is that if you can control the ants, so if the ants don't come on to the plants which are having these common pests, then nature using the parasitic wasps as well as the ladybug beetle will take care of that. Will take care of the mealybugs and the white flies and the aphids and the spider mites. So one way of controlling the ants in a home garden or in your rooftop balcony or in your terrace is to put a saucer of water under the pot so that the ants don't cross over. But in most cases when you have a kitchen garden it's very difficult to put water under every pot or if it's already in the garden itself it's very difficult to do that. So let's just first have a quick jugad hack for controlling ants. So the first hack for the day is going to be using boric acid. Boric acid or borax, it's available in pharmacies and uh, most homes used to have it. In our days, it was always there in the uh, medicine cabinet. And what we are doing is we are taking a small plastic tray like what you find the strawberry trays uh, from the supermarket. And we are going to make a solution uh, with uh, about five tablespoons of uh, sugar, two teaspoons of boric acid, two cups of warm water. Mix all this up and what we are going to do is we are going to soak cotton balls and place them into these uh, plastic uh, containers which has a lid on the top but at the bottom we have a hole through which the ants can enter. The idea is that we don't want to keep it exposed so that other beneficial insects don't get killed in this. But ants will get in through these small uh, cuts that we have made at the bottom. They come to eat the sugar syrup, but they end up ingesting the boric acid, which uh, uh, kills them. So this is a very quick way of uh, getting rid of uh, the ants. And uh, as you can see here in this particular uh, trial, uh, I started to use this and within about 10 days uh, the ants were just gone and once the ants went the mealybugs, the white flies, the spider mites, uh, I, I mean they all disappeared. So like I said once you take the ants out of the equation you take the mealybugs, the aphids, the white flies, the spider mites out of the equation. Once the ant which is the protector of these common household pests are gone then the natural predators like the parasitic wasp, 
the ladybug beetle, they will come into play and nature restores the equilibrium between these various species. So, when we use pesticides, we don't just kill the pest that we want to kill on the plant. We kill many other beneficial uh, insects in the bargain. And did you know that only 3% of all the insects in your garden, only 3% are harmful to the plants we grow. So when we apply pesticides, we knock the 97% out of the ballpark and then we are left without any natural predators and we have to more and more depend on using more and more toxic pesticides. That's the vicious cycle that we end ourselves in and that becomes extremely frustrating for home gardeners. Final hack of the day which you've been eagerly waiting for. Uh, this is something that's going to give you control over aphids, mealybugs, white flies, spider mites, um, and powdery mildew uh, and snails and slugs. So it's a six in one uh, jugard uh, hack that you're going to get and it involves the most basic thing that is there in your kitchen which is plain baking soda. So it's baking soda, it's not baking powder or it's not washing soda, it's just baking soda which is nothing but sodium bicarbonate. So as you can see, the uh, sodium bicarbonate is used as baking soda. We use it especially in the south when we want to ferment idli or dosa. It's 100% biodegradable, non-toxic, it's non-chemical for powdery mildew, aphids, spider mites, uh, for snails and slugs and also for against fungus. Uh, it's a simple formula, a liter of water, teaspoonful of baking soda, one teaspoon of vegetable oil or olive oil and a teaspoon of liquid soap or detergent. Mix well and spray especially on the undersurface of the plants and uh, for snails and slugs you can sprinkle directly on them. You could even sprinkle boric acid uh, on the snails, good control you get. As an added bonus, it works on caterpillars like cabbage worms which are extremely destructive. And the last advantage that we get is also it is a means of cleaning leaves. Ba uh, baking soda solution, which is half a teaspoon of baking soda and a liter of water, it cleans the leaves and it improves the photosynthesis in the plants. There you have it folks, an interesting Jugard uh, technology uh, which can take care of m the most common house gardening pests. So you have mealybugs, you have aphids, you've got white flies, spider mites, you've got powdery mildew and you've got snails and slugs. So a Jugard hack that works wonderful. I've tried this so many times and it's, it amazes me how successful it is. So keep this hack as your last resort, but use what I taught you earlier in this episode about observing nature. The more you observe nature, the more fascinating it becomes because nature has got its own inbuilt checks and balances. So if you allow nature to operate, then your involvement becomes redundant and you can enjoy the fruits of your labor without interfering with what nature needs to do. And that is what we call natural farming. In fact, it is something that I am so committed to because I work with about 2.2 million farmers across the country, um, 22 lakh farmers on the platform of the Art of Living Foundation. And uh, to me, bringing back this heritage, which is from our Vedic traditions, where we allow, it's called natural farming because you let nature do what nature knows best. And uh, right now, a number of my teachers have announced uh, online uh, courses for natural farming. Uh, we have uh, Vijay Lakshmi Londe uh, in Maharashtra who's announced this. We've got in Delhi our uh, champion teachers like Aditi Popli. We've got uh, um, uh, Archana Jha. We've got Savita Bhutani. We've got Anjali Malik. We've got Dipali Tyagi. All of them, they've been announcing these online courses. What you thought was home gardening or agriculture 
It becomes a whole different paradigm when you look at the whole planet holistically, the environment and mother nature holistically. So, do find out where these courses, when these courses are being held and uh, do register. I mean, they are all my favorite students and I'm sure you will learn a lot from them. At least, it's a good introduction for this wonderful technology. As far as the Zoom episodes are concerned, I think this is probably the last of the series. I think we've had a great run for these six episodes. However, I am really going to uh, post a lot of uh, videos connected with these kind of special uh, jugaad aspects of home gardening on my YouTube channel. And uh, at the end of this, uh, I will display my email ID. And if you wish to be included in my mailing list, if you wish your friends to be included in my mailing list, then please share your email ID so that I can put them in the group. And whenever I post something, you will get the notifications for the same. So, uh, happy uh, home gardening during the rest of the lockdown. And I wish you all the very best and we shall stay in touch.